What's up guys, it's TechnoViking23 coming to you today with another Raid Shadow Legends video. And in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Barbarian Faction Crypt. We're going to be doing Stage 21 and completing this faction. Now I have already actually 3 starred this entire faction, but I wanted to go over the team I used and also show you guys the run. On Stage 21, it is a little bit of a longer run at 9 minutes and 26 seconds, so we will probably speed that up just a little bit. But just to kind of give you guys an idea of the team we are using here, it's relatively, um, you know, low-key, pretty account-friendly depending on where you are in the game. We have High Katoon, our 30-day login reward, and is our lead for her 19% speed aura. Uh, we are using Marked, a rare champion. We have um, War Maiden, who you guys know is my favorite rare champion in the game. And then we have Sill of the Drakes, uh, another login reward champion who is one of the better legendaries in this game. And finally, we do have Sky Touched Shaman, who is probably the toughest of these champions to acquire. She has really good synergy with um, Sill in this combination that we'll talk about a little bit after the run is over with. Uh, and she's a Void Champion, so like I said, a little bit more difficult to get her. Um, however, you'll notice I have not really even leveled her up to the max yet, and we were still able to complete this Faction War run. So let's go ahead and start this up. I'll let it play through, speed it up a little bit, and then I'll join you guys toward the end and we'll go over this team, uh, the gear and everything, and talk a little bit about it. All right, guys, so there you go. Uh, nine minutes and 25 seconds, new best time, even though it took forever. And one thing you probably did notice throughout this run is that this team lacks in the damage department big time. It's kind of why it takes so long. Um, Sill the Drakes is really the only kind of DPS character we have in there. You can tell, obviously, the fact that she pretty much doubled up War Maiden the next closest. Um, as I went over my War Maiden video the other night, my War Maiden is not really built to be doing damage right now. She's kind of just built to apply her decreased defense in Arena. So again, I'm using that exact same build that you saw the other night for her. So just kind of shows you again that you can still kind of do some content depending on how the gear is. And uh, really this is more just to show that with everything else like in this game, you just kind of got to work with what you have. So we don't have a ton of damage here, but we have a lot of buffs. We have a lot of uh, debuffs to put on the enemy. We've got some speed boosting with High Katoon. We've got the revive from Silda Drake. Sky Touch Shaman can do a little bit of that as well. And again, she's not even leveled. I don't even know what kind of gear she has on her. Uh, but you can see here, a lot of healing from those two. And that's kind of what you need in Faction Wars. You kind of need a combination of damage and buffs, debuffs, uh, crowd control. You know, Silda's got the stun with her AoE. So um, there's a lot of things that go into that when you're trying to get a Faction War team. But I was kind of happy, uh, actually, when I did this the other night, when Faction Curse was open, I did it kind of on accident because I had gotten all the way down to 19. You can see here, some of the times are a little bit better than others. And I finished 19 fairly quickly, finished 20 surprisingly fast as well. And then I just said, you know what? I got four keys left. Let's go ahead and take a shot on 21. I didn't think they'd be able to do it. I actually put it on the auto battle and I walked out of the room for a few minutes. I came back and they had completed it. So pretty cool. I was pretty surprised. So this was actually my second faction crypt that I did complete. Uh, High Elves is the other one, which I'll try to get a video out on that um, at a later date when that opens back up again, which you can see it's going to be uh, a couple of days there. But let's go ahead and go over the team. We'll show you guys their gear. We went over War Maiden the other night, so you kind of already have an idea with her. Let's take a look here at my Sill of the Drakes. Again, she's your login reward you get after six months of playing the game. One of the best legendaries in the game. She is an amazing champion. Let's take a look at her kit here real quick if you guys aren't familiar with it. So basically on her A1, attacks one enemy, 
chance of a place, uh, placing decreased speed for two turns and also uh, can decrease their turn meter. That's a really great ability there. And again, if you can reduce the turn meter on the boss or the mobs in there, it's really a good thing. Damage is based on defense also, which also helps you scale that up a little bit. You've got her A2 wing beat flurry, uh, attacks all enemies two times with each hit having a chance to place a stun debuff. So you kind of saw some of those mobs getting stunned. That's another good thing with her. And again, damage is based on defense. Phoenix Wright is going to revive an ally with 50% HP and put a 50% ally protection on them for two turns. Amazing ability. You saw her use this a whole bunch on uh, Sky Touch Shaman. That's kind of why those two are a good combination because Sky Touch Shaman actually does sort of kill herself just from using her normal abilities, which we'll see here in just a second. Then you have her passive, which is Boundless Life, which heals all allies by 10% of their max HP at the start of every turn. Um, and then puts a increased speed buff on random ally for two turns. It's amazing passive. I'm gonna get a bunch of healing out of it. And also that increased speed buff, which is pretty cool. Uh, Masteries here, I think for her, are pretty typical. We kind of went down the offense tree all the way down here to War Master. And then we've got uh, Lasting Gifts, extends the buffs that she puts out. We've also got Master Hexer to extend any debuffs that she puts out. Uh, we got Laura Steel here. So pretty general build, mainly going for the accuracy and the stat boost there. She is a really solid um, support champion or defense champion, whatever you want to call her there. So looking at her gear, you can see her total stats. Uh, she's not super fast. 182 is not bad. You know, that's pretty good for most of the content I'm burning her in. Crit rate, obviously, that could be up a little bit higher. Debuff accuracy, I'd like to get that over 200, but it's not too bad. It's pretty much working out for everything I've been running. Her defense is almost 5,000. It's pretty solid for what I do, uh, and almost 42,000 HP. Uh, right now, we actually do have her in a relentless set to get her as many turns as we possibly can. You guys can kind of take a look here. We mainly went for accuracy and speed when we were trying to build this. So I actually have her in my pretty much my best relentless gear that I had on this account. You can see that we got a triple roll on crit rate. Uh, she's in defense gloves actually right now. Uh, you know, if we had switched those to crit rate or crit damage, could probably get a little more damage out of her. But right now, we kind of just want her to be tanky as well. Uh, you got her in a defense chest there with the perception set to get a little bit of extra accuracy and speed. And actually, I do have a six star pair of relentless speed boots, which is kind of surprising. And they did roll accuracy at least once and got the crit rate on there as well. So her gear is not bad. Uh, could always be better, but not bad. Uh, in her ring, we have a defense ring there with a pretty good defense roll. We went with a crit damage amulet there. Uh, the rolls on this aren't great, but it did have the accuracy, which is the main reason we went for it. I probably could replace this at some point, but it's kind of the best one I have right now. Her banner, we do have defense on that. And okay, I don't have really any other good banners from Barbarians right now, but that's kind of the best we had at the moment. So again, it's just kind of working with what we have. And that's kind of how our Sill of the Drakes uh, is built out there. All right, let's see who else is here. Going all the way down, we go to our High Katoon again. My High Katoon and my War Maiden are both built out for the arena, so they're in full speed gear pretty much to go as fast as they possibly can. And again, she's going to bring that uh, speed boost aura to the team to help us out. Uh, her kit, we've been over her kit before, but basically she has the decreased speed on her A1. The Rally of the Horde ability is what's the most important, filling the turn meters with the increased speed buff. And then she does have a little bit of turn meter reduction here on the A3, so that can be helpful if you are hitting it. Uh, her mastery is kind of the same thing. We've got her um, in accuracy, lore of steel for a little bit more speed. And I actually do have her in Helm Smasher just in case she has to actually hit someone in the arena. Hopefully she gets a little bit of extra damage that way, but you know, we're really not too concerned about her doing damage. And going over her gear, you've got a speed weapon here. Everything here is going to be speed. You can see it's not even fully rolled up too. That's another thing. Um, so, you know, just kind of some general gear here. What we were going for is to get the most speed possible out of each one of these pieces. You can see most of them are going to have a speed roll on the substats. They're not always going to be high, but it was just trying to find a set that had all speed in the substats so we could get even more speed. And her total speed, you can see here, is about 242. So she's one of my faster champions I have on my roster. Again, I'm not late game yet. I don't have the super good speed gear. I do have some really good speed pieces that have rolled triple rolls, but I'm holding those for Arbiter since I'm about to get her, and I'm going to put those on her as soon as she comes in. Uh, defense 3000, so she... You know, she could take some hits. Her HP could probably be higher. And again, her crit rate, all this. She's not designed to do damage at all. Uh, really, she's just designed to go fast uh, and get her buffs out on the team there. So you just kind of see some of the gear there. Again, the, the accessories are not going to be great. A defense ring, defense 
amulet that's try to make her a little bit more tanky when we use her in dungeons and we did throw an accuracy banner on her because it did have this 11 speed roll that's kind of what we were looking for there all right continuing on we have war maiden uh her build's probably identical to what it was last night yeah 229 speed um same stats pretty much we went over in the war maiden video so you guys have kind of already seen uh, what she has on her. She's got the double speed roll on the accuracy banner. Um, again with her, it's accuracy to land that crumbling blast ability. That's the big thing for her. And that's kind of what she brings to the table for Faction Wars. She's going to be that AoE decreased uh, defense, which is going to help you get through the waves. You saw we actually got through the waves fairly quickly. It's the boss that gave us the most trouble. Uh, Marked is another really good rare champion, and I do have her in lifesteal uh, mostly because I was trying to build her up for a possible use in clan boss before I beat my uh, built my unkillable team. And kind of what makes her good is she's got this A1 here, which does have a decreased defense on it, single target. So that's pretty good. That's good for a clan boss. It's also good just for in general use against bosses. Uh, her A2 attacks all enemies and has a decreased accuracy debuff. So again, that's another debuff you're bringing to the table for your faction war team. And then we have this Totemic Power, which does a block debuffs buff on all allies for one turn. It's 60% increased de uh, defense for two turns. So pretty good there. This is also a very useful ability in this clan boss. If you can speed tune her properly, you can actually get this to block the stun from the clan boss. So Marked has a lot of uh, usability in this game. She's one of the better rares in the game. And she also does have an ally defense aura for faction crypts. So you can kind of see that's why we kind of have her in there. She's got a lot of utility. She's got some buffs and debuffs. And that's kind of like what you're looking for uh, when you go uh, into faction wars. Kind of have her built uh, for clan boss pretty much. That's how I built her uh, to run in a clan boss team. Unfortunately, never got the user because I built my unkillable before I got there. Her gear is, it's okay. Uh, we've got a six star weapon with 16 speed roll. And again, I kind of built her to go fast. Uh, I was trying to speed tune her for this clan boss team I was doing. So the helmet is just a basic lifesteal helmet. Nothing really great there. Uh, we did get a triple speed roll on the shield. That's why that's in there. Uh, you know, crit rate gloves just to have her do a little bit more damage, even though she's not going to hit that hard. Uh, we've got an accuracy chest to hit that decreased defense. A little bit more speed there. And then just the random pair of speed boots that I had. Um, that were the best at the time I built her. Got a defense uh, ring, defense amulets, and then a defense banner actually, which did have a speed roll. And again, we were trying to get her to a certain speed. She's at 202. Uh, her defense, a lot of these could be higher, but like I said, just kind of a general build for her. And that's why I'm saying, like with this clan boss, or not the clan boss team, uh, faction war team, it's kind of interesting to see that we were able, able to actually complete it uh, using these champions. All right, so I think that's four of the five, and we got to find our Sky Touch Shaman here, who, again, is not even fully leveled up. And, uh, well, there you go. <laughs> I haven't even put Masteries on her yet. That is that's pretty funny. Uh, I don't know what kind of... She did, probably doesn't have books either, so that kind of makes it a little bit more impressive just seeing how good she's able to do in Faction War 21 with no masteries <laughs> that's pretty awesome uh, so we got an attack all enemies on the a1 heals by 15 percent of the damage inflicted if she has less than 50 percent hp and then boosts her turn meter instead uh, if she has higher than 50 percent hp she's got a really interesting kit uh, she removes all debuffs from all allies and places a revive on death debuff um rebuff and block debuffs for two turns that's like a really good her main ability there you see we don't have any books on it so six turn cooldown still then she's got this passive, which damages her by 10% of her max HP at the start of every turn. But then she heals all allies except for herself, equal to half of the lost HP. So then you get a decreased speed debuff on her as well, and a fear debuff on her for one turn. That's why she pairs up so well with Sil of the Drakes, because she's damaging herself every single turn, but Sil of the Drakes is healing everybody every turn. So it kind of evens out a little bit, and then she's giving all that healing to the team. You saw you know, in that graphic at the end there how much healing she had actually done. So that's kind of how that power benefits, but you have to kind of work around it a little bit since she is doing damage to herself. The other way you get around that is to use immortal sets on her, which will uh, heal you by a percentage of your HP uh, every turn. And then her aura is just a HP aura there. So again, no masteries on her. So, <laughs> and here you go too. The gear is not really even rolled. So we have, we do have one immortal set on her and I don't know really, I think I just threw gear on her to get her to, to be able to work in anything. And she's not even, like I said, she's level 41. She's not fully ascended, no masteries. So you see we got a little bit of speed on the weapon. Uh, a little bit of speed. It didn't hit any rolls, though, on the helmet. 
and a little bit of speed on the shield didn't hit either. We've got her in defense gloves with HP, uh, just to kind of help her survivability. HP chest, not even rolled up past eight. And then she's in some speed boots uh, that completes that immortal set. Like I said, HP, it gives you 15% HP and then heals by 3% of your total HP every single turn. So that if you can put her in basically three sets of that, it can kind of offset that... Um, you know, her damage that she's taking to herself every turn. If you're not using Syl of the Drakes, that's a solution, but pairing her up with Syl is just an awesome combination because it kind of counteracts the, the ability there. And then we only have, we have an HP ring with a pretty good HP double roll there percentage, but again, um, you can see she's not even built and we're still able to finish Faction War 21 with her. So pretty great Void Champion there and Sky Touch Shaman uh, has a lot of interesting utility with some of the other Barbarian uh, champions there, so that's kind of a, let's take a look, I guess, at her total stats. You can see how bad they are. Um, yeah, speed, she's only 160, she's pretty slow. She, she literally has no damage, and then her attack and defense are pretty terrible. HP's somewhat high, but uh, it's just funny. She's not hardly even built, and we were still able to finish the faction war there, so pretty cool stuff there, guys. Anyways, that's going to kind of do it for this video. I just kind of want to take you guys through one of my first faction war completions. I was pretty happy. Uh, I've been putting a lot of work into my faction war teams. I actually, up until this point, almost nine months in the game, I had not really been paying much attention to faction wars, and it was hurting my account quite a bit. It's something that, unfortunately, as a newer player, I never really knew to do. So if you guys are just starting the game, it's very important to just go in and do what you can in faction wars. I try to, you know, show you that on, our, on the free-to-play accounts that I do, where... Just, you know, go in and do what you can do. Get those glyphs. Those are going to be very helpful to you. And just try to progress through your faction wars. So it's something I wish I had done a lot earlier in this game. But right now, I'm trying to catch up at the stage of my account I'm in. I should be a lot closer to getting Lydia than I am. But over the last month or so, I've made a ton of progress. I'm almost to 600 stars. So I'm getting there. I want to try to finish it before they bring out the new faction. Where um, then you're probably going to have to get more stars. But within the last week, we were able to finish both the High Elves um, and the Barbarians, and we're very close. I think I'm on stage 21 of Dark Elves, so we're getting pretty close to being able to make um, a lot of movement on these. And I've got a bunch of great Dwarves I pulled from the Void uh, 2x, so going to build those up and hopefully uh, take a run at that, along with we've got Molly Tankard and we did get Mountain King, so I think my Dwarf faction is going to be in pretty good shape. Uh, and Skinwalkers were in really good shape too, so... Uh, really looking forward to tackling the rest of the faction wars here over the next few uh, coming weeks there, guys. So pretty exciting times. It's, it feels good when you start progressing your account a little bit, even if, you know, you're a little bit behind the, the curve, so to speak. And like I said, I wish I had known earlier on in the game to focus on faction wars, but, um, you know, it's been pretty good to finally start catching up to that. And then just to show you guys the great haul, you can kind of see the stat bonuses that are being applied there for some of those champions we were using in that faction war run. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions at all about the team I'm using here or the run itself, feel free to leave them down below in the comments, and I'll get to those as soon as I can. Uh, as always, I hope you guys are having a great day. Thanks, as always, for watching, and I'll see you again next time.